A no commentary version of this run can be found in the pinned comment in the comments section below. This video is intended as a game walkthrough. It is not a speedrun. All strategies in this video were made for efficiency and success rate. Please watch the entire video and listen carefully to the commentary before trying any of these strategies for yourself. Hello everyone, this is a no save, no damage run of Resident Evil 2 Remake, Leon B. This is the advanced strats run. And this is played on hardcore difficulty. Claire, I hope you made it here. So to start, this uh, set of zombies picks up after you uh, pick up the uh, the bolt cutters. Sorry, I usually have to like stop and remember the names of items as they appear in the game. Just because I'm always doing things so fast. Cutting tool, actually. But uh, yeah, once you once you fade in, buffer a right input and then move directly to the right and just like move specifically in that line, otherwise zombies are going to grab you while they're getting up. Next up, you can use the cutting tool. We're going to take the grenade, the handgun, well, the 45 auto handgun. Leon's got a different 45 auto handgun, it's just an M19A11. The 45 semi-auto, what, what, 45 auto, sorry. It's like 10 at night. I'm kind of tired. Then we chuck this grenade to uh, get around these guys. There's a very rare chance you might be able to save one, but yeah. So that uh, that zombie right there basically just sets the tone for how this run is going to look because there were a lot of really close calls this run. This is not how I imagined my first day. <laughs> And this run just kind of tried to do a lot to get me to hit that reset button. Here's another one here, too. I think these zombies are, like, real clustered together, aren't they? No, not this time. Just recording a one and done, because, you know, I don't remember, like, the finer details of what happened this run. We'll squeeze in between Elliot and the desk. We're gonna wait until we're on the way out to grab that knife. Because that makes it easier to pick up all the things in this room. There actually was really no point in me grabbing these 45 bullets here, because I was just gonna put them away and just like never take them out again anyway. And I guess I just kind of forgot to take them out in general over time. Just like over, over various attempts, whenever I would go to visit the box, and one of the things that I would pull out would be the 45, I would just forget to pull it back out. But anyway, we put away the 45 bullets, uh, the used up key, and the VP70. And then we're gonna use the, uh, we're gonna grab the knife, and then we're gonna use the cutting tool. And we're going to mix that yellow gunpowder we got in the save room with the blue gunpowder here, get some shotgun shells, and we also want to combine those two gunpowders together because we are running on very tight inventory space. 
I'm gonna take that round handle, put it in slot number five, so it's just like one down press in order to be able to use it. We'll go through this door and use the electrical part. Which may or may not be a fuse. We'll take the uh, the wooden board here, and then we're just gonna hug over here, and there is a, yet another close call. Is a uh, the best thing to probably do would have is been to actually here? like uh, shoot that zombie in the legs until he's stunned, and then could have run past him maybe. But now nah, I decided to get ballsy with that one just because it was so close to the beginning. And then the uh, then the zombie in the main hall, like right after you get through the shutters afterwards, like he was all up in my jock too. Anyway, so yeah, gonna put up the board the board there. We need to put up that board for uh, RPD two. And over here, I, I was just dumb. Instead of waiting for the liquor to get onto the ground before I started slashing him, I started slashing him on the wall, right? So at 120 FPS, the knife does an absurd number of hits every time you swing it. It's all tied to your frame rate. The knife does the same base damage with every damage tick. The knife just does more hits, which does equal more damage per second. But it's important to make that distinction because the knife will wear out faster at higher frame rates. In any case, if you lock your frame rate to 120 FPS, then you can kill the liquor in maybe about seven slashes or so. Also got the bomb, got a flash grenade, and getting the uh, the hit pouch here. And we're just gonna run straight to get the shotgun. But I wanted to take out that liquor because basically doing both of those things was just setting up so that whenever we have to run away from Mr. X and RPD2 later, we don't have to worry about him. We can just run, like we don't have to worry about like the liquor, we don't have to worry about that zombie. The catch is we have to take care of them during RPD1. That's like the only like safe and comfortable time to be able to do that is during RPD-1 before Mr. X shows up, so that means the first time we encounter them. Which is why I picked up the knife and used it there instead of boxing it like I usually do. These guys took a while to bash through the door, but, you know. Decapitate both of them while they're still recovering. I'm going to avoid uh, this female cop zombie over here. CAP to open this locker. I probably actually didn't even need to open this locker, truth be told. But early game, gonna do it anyway. Could always use more shotgun shells. Yeah, the uh, the way headshots work in this game, by the way, in case you haven't uh, figured out from the myriad other Leon videos that I've uploaded, is you have to be able to get really close and no other part of the zombie can be in the crosshair. So like if the zombie throws its arms up when it's lunging at you or something like that, you're not going to counter with a decapitation. You're going to counter by breaking off its arm and maybe getting away if you're lucky. Because this is the advanced strats run and, you know, we're doing things kind of quickly, we're just going to go ahead and grab the, uh, the battery for the bomb and uh, leave. And leaving triggers Mr. X. You guys heard the female zombie behind me. And then we're going to stun this guy by shooting him in the leg. I'll take these bullets over here and... I usually get pretty lucky with this zombie by the spade key over here. Because usually I can uh, shoot his left leg. Perspective right leg. If we're talking from the perspective of your camera, it's going to be the leg on the right. Or his left leg. So either way, I shot the leg. And usually I can get a, I can score a stun on that leg in like one or two shots. Put down the bomb. Just try to gain as much ground as we can to run away from Mr. X as possible. We're going to open the door. We're going to come back in. Doing so will prevent that shelf from falling over on the way out. And the solution to this puzzle is Ram Harp Bird. Next, 
we're gonna go downstairs. Uh, usually the female zombie is by the body near the stairs when I come down these stairs over here. I opted not to take the ladder because doing so would wake up the zombie that is eating the body next to the rolling shelves. So I went down the stairs instead and we needed to come down here anyway in order to get the uh, emblem. And the solution to that is children scale worm. Decapitate that guy. And uh, because Misty over there is next to the ladder, Mr. X is coming in the room. I decided to go ahead and uh, decapitate Analingus there. Unfortunately, we have to leave Misty alive, but because I had enough inventory slots free, I was able to grab the knife off the body. If we do not have any inventory slots free, then what is needed to be done is get rid of the handgun ammo in your inventory. But not before reloading, so you should have seven handgun bullets. Marvin is, like, danger close. Mr. X isn't, like... Mr. X is kind of far away for the moment, so we have enough time to decapitate Marvin. So stun him with a leg shot and then decapitate, because that will prevent Marvin from throwing his arms out in front of you. It'll prevent him from biting you. It allows you to get danger close and score the decap immediately. That's what you do. Then we put away the uh, flash grenades and the spade key, because we don't need the spade key anymore. But yeah, very, very important. If you want guaranteed decapitations with the shotgun, stun first. Shoot them in the leg, stun them first. Then you switch to the shotgun and score that decap. Once you get used to it, it's so easy. Next, I'm going to equip the knife with the most durability. And also, I picked up a grenade at the bottom of the stairs. We're going to save as many grenades and as many flash grenades as we can for Super Tyrant at the end of the game, as we usually do. We can sacrifice some grenades for um, getting around the G-Mutants in the sewers, but we also use flash grenades in certain places as well. Anyhow, G1. We're more important on this thing. Start with the highest durability knife first. And uh, just try to make sure that Leon's swing arcs in such a way that it is going to cover the most surface area on G1's body, i.e. the line that is going to result in the most hits. Next, we're going to keep slashing, and then when he goes down, we're just going to aim down. Because you can see, like, Leon's, Leon's knife is just arcing to the right. Somebody's watching. And as it continually arcs to the right, if you just position Leon so that the knife, the knife's trajectory will just go through as much as possible during your active damage frames, then that's pretty much the trick to being able to take him out really quickly. And once again, that trick is only doable at 120 FPS. So you can only do this trick on PC, or you can only do it on... PS5, or Xbox Series X. During this run, I'm not going to use the... Uh, the Magnum either, so it's just straight shotgun. Just straight shotgun and straight 45. Hey! I'm not done talking to you! I like to decapitate that zombie because on the way out of here, if he's still alive, then there is a chance that the flash grenade will not work whenever the cells open after getting the parking card from Ben or Ben's body.
Great. So, yellow gunpowder. Bam. 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 You want to shoot all three of the dogs in those cages because they will break out later. Next up, we want this flash grenade in here. That's the only item we want in there. So we picked up the uh, yellow gunpowder in the garage. The solution to this puzzle is switches two and three. So just the two switches in the middle here. And then we're gonna go to the shelf over here and we're gonna combine it with that and get three shotgun shells, which are gonna take out these next three dogs. One. Two. Just pre-aim to that very spot, and that dog will always run in that spot. Same with this one. Bam. A little bit of premeditative aiming goes a long way. Speaking of premeditative aiming, I figured out a new trick for these zombies up here. One that doesn't require me to use the handgun at all. So check this out. A zombie will only lunge at you if there is a straight line on the floor. If there is an object between you and it, it actually will not lunge at you, which means you can get danger close to these two zombies over here because there's a couch on the right-hand side. And the zombies, as they're moving around there, they're hitting the corner of that couch. They're not going to spin, they're not going to get at you because there is an object in the way and their AI prevents them from actually lunging at you. There might be some exceptions to this rule, to which I haven't discovered yet. I only really figured out about that today, so I haven't really done a thorough amount of practice for it yet, but... For this type of run, it kind of helps. So you might be thinking, God, that was close. But actually, actually really wasn't that close. Like, if I messed up my inputs, then yeah, it would have absolutely been close. But, you know. We're going to discard the uh, the crank. We're going to put the, uh, the large cog there. And we're going to open this and stack our grenades here again. We'll climb down here. Skip the cutscene. We gotta make sure we pull out the shotgun here. One, two, except she threw her arms out in front. That's kind of what I was talking about. So I used two shotgun shells. Next, we're gonna put away the two grenade stacks we got and then pick up the key. She's going to lunge at us because I didn't kill her. Then we're going to flip that to the left. That was a bit of a silly close call, even. There's also a pretty badass strat that I figured out this run. Whether I use it in the Claire run, I'm not sure because of the way Leon's gun works versus the way Claire's gun works, but I was still pretty... I was still feeling myself when I found it. Anyway, so we're going to aim at the cracks on the wall, and then we're going to aim at Mr. X's face. And whenever he moves, as soon as he gains control, he's going to uh, do his hook punch, which is completely avoidable by just releasing your aim and holding W. By releasing your aim and holding forward, I should say. We're not going to pick up that flash grenade there yet. If we do, it is going to clog our inventory. Do not do it. 
Under any circumstances, do not do it. We'll decapitate him as well. And then we're going to walk in. We're going to trigger that liquor in the hallway. Then we can exit, pick up these uh, 45 bullets, and then run back through. Next, we're going to discard that knife, and we're going to take the hand grenade. Mr. X is going to bash in here. I tried to see if I could score a stun on him the first time, but of course, that was that was a dumb pass Carsey moment. But at least the pass Carsey moments here are actually like pretty. Uh, <laughs> they're pretty. Uh, they're pretty clinchy. They're pretty clinchy. And not even like a dumb, oh, I left that item on the other side of the map kind of, kind of stupid. Anyhow, we want him behind us. We got to keep in mind that uh, Misty from earlier is still alive, so we got to take her out. Potentially. Actually, I should have taken her out before I did this, but I wasn't sure where Mr. X was, and I wasn't sure if she was going to, like, come after me. So I just went ahead and just started moving these. The thing is, the recovery on these moving is so long. And then once this happened, holy crap, if I was not buffering that W input, she would have she would have back grabbed the shit out of me. Either way, shelves are pushed. Zombie is dead. And fascinatingly enough, Mr. X decided to take the stairs up this time. Instead of taking the ladder, because he didn't see me. The we'll leg this guy, usually the perspective right leg. On both of these guys is going to take more uh is gonna take less shots. We'll use the large cog. We'll pick it back up. <sighs> Take the small crank. Small cog, excuse me. Not crank. It's a cog. Use the large cog. Use a small cog, and then we're going to go into the back room and grab the large gunpowder. Hope I don't have to write a report on this. So, I thought I heard Mr. X going across the hall that way, and instead I'm trying to... Oh man, that was so close. So I'm trying to score uh, stuns on this guy, because the 45 actually has a higher stun rate than Leon's VP70. So I was able to... Uh, or Leon's Matilda, rather. I should, I should call it the Matilda. It was the VP70 in the original game. But anyway. Uh, so if you shoot Mr. X in the face enough times then it'll actually stun him. He doesn't have to, like, take a knee and be taken out of the picture for, like, a minute. But if you stun him, and he's, like, in a bit of a daze, then he can actually run around him without his, like, stupid grab wall happening. Because that's a, that's, a, uh, that's a problem with Mr. X that has prevented me from speedrunning this game. Is that he has a... Is, is that he has this ridiculous, like, like, wall of, like, grab frames. And uh, you have to disable it either by running either by running around him after like 
a certain number of frames whenever he like initiates that stupid little that left hook that he has or by stunning him which I just demonstrated okay so next up these dogs are typically really close to this red car over here so if you run up to that red barrel you can shoot them and we got to look for the other dog we see the other dog he's actually jumped over the car which I didn't even know he could jump over that uh, that white car there When I say grab wall, when I say grab wall, Mr. X has a has basically a wall of grab frames. And if you get close to him, then he will just grab you and throw you. And there's like not really anything you can do about it to like there's there you you, you cannot telegraph those grab frames because they're just always active. You can disable them by like baiting out an attack or by stunning him. But otherwise, yeah, if he, if he grabs you, then that's it. You took damage. Unless it's like a full-on face grab, which you can counter with a defense item. If you can counter it with a defense item, it does not count as damage. Because it does zero points of damage. But uh, that attack is an IK anyway. IK, instant kill. Alright, so also we have, to, we have to switch over to the flash grenade here. Mr. X shows up. And then I'm going to run over to this chair and aim towards that wall in order to angle Leon's body. So that whenever Mr. X comes into view, we immediately strafe in a circle. We just circle strafe him. And then we can throw our grenade here. And then it also stuns Mr. X from behind as well. Just try to do your best to make sure that grenade will uh, line up in the T. Like in the, like the T-junction there of that hallway. So that that way the flash proc actually takes the other zombies in that hallway as well. Is that the intel you needed? Unfortunately, no. Ben didn't come through. Well, what exactly are you looking for? More info on the people responsible for this mess. Road's out. Going through that gun shop looks like the only way. pick up this grenade and pick up the shotgun upgrade. With the shotgun upgrade we can now decapitate zombies from further away and also the shotgun is eh, about 1.5 two times Part as strong the now. Corporation? They're a pharmaceutical company secretly making bioweapons. They have a virus. It turns people into indestructible monsters. That explains the horrible things I've seen. <sighs> this section here You've seen it a thousand times. And that's why I'm looking for a network. This is how we get to No description needed. What you've said? The At least not big. until we control Ada. Gee, thanks. Can't imagine a real scientist being down here. According to HQ, this leads right into a wall of facility. Come on. Sewers are run by the city. How could they have a facility without the authorities knowing? Jesus! That an earthquake? What the hell? Again? It's not too late to turn back. No chance. You're stuck with me to the end. Hold left. Hold right for two chomps. One, two. Now hold left. You win.
Also, there's a grenade there. Chew on that, you overgrown son of a bitch. Leon, up here. What the hell was? Just get up here. Can't say I didn't warn you. You said the virus turned people into monsters, not reptiles. Fair point. I'm just impressed you made it in one piece. So let me get this straight. Umbrella sells monsters like that to who? Our military? Somebody else's? They don't sell the monsters. They sell the viruses that make them. And Annette is who makes the viruses. As scary as that alligator was, Annette is far more dangerous. You can run, Annette, but you can't hide. It's secret weapon time. So to start, we're going to power on the fan, break the fan, scan that to power on the next fan, move around the corner here, and... Scan that to break the fan, and then on the bottom left, there's going to be another switch we got to hit in order to switch the power to the door that's in front of us. We're just going to run straight past this zombie. You can get through here with only the nine bullets and Ada's handgun. And we'll take this line over here to go around this, uh, this fat zombie over here. scan this guy while the zombie is getting up. That allows us to power on the elevator, and somehow I just kept missing shots. Like the fucking chode I am. Anyway, I was a little worried that I wouldn't have enough shots to stun this guy, but by shooting the perspective right leg, I think it doesn't really have, like, a whole lot of stun there. And because of that, because, it, because of Got how many shots it took me to stun the first one, I almost got I almost got grabbed by the zombie from upstairs. Running, if you do it too slow, then the zombie from upstairs will grab you once you hit the elevator. So once Mr. X comes up, we gotta scan that thing to turn the power onto the junction box. Switch the junction box in order to blow out this fan over here. Bravo. Gonna burn me alive now. You'll never get your filthy hands on the G. I'm not the only one after it. You realize that. And you won't die alone. So we'll turn on the power and we'll uh, use that to take out the first uh, locking mechanism. Switch at the junction box, take out the second locking mechanism that and there it's done She's doing. visitor clearance confirmed your ID is authorized until October 1st please return before this date 
not gonna happen. Ada, where are you? That's a pleasant smell. So we'll decapitate this guy. Uh, I would recommend decapitating the zombie in the yellow safety vest there. Because he will wake up. And also decapitate that guy there too. We're going to equip the uh, 45 here as well. Here's what we're going to do to get around this G-Mutant over here. We're going to shoot him, and then he's going to plop out of the water, and that animation where he comes out of the water can be broken down into two distinct phases, the up phase and the down phase, because he always has to like shoot out of the water with such force, right? That's his up phase, and then when he's going down, that's his recovery phase. So if you learn how to identify like either side of that animation, it's like he'll go up and then he'll go down. And when he goes down, that's when you want to pass around him. Where'd she go? So, like, when you see a G mutant's back out like that, it makes here. it super easy to get them out, or makes it super easy to dodge around them that way. We're gonna put away the uh, handgun, the club key, and the stack of three grenades there. Although it might be more beneficial for you to carry the stack of grenades with you. Because uh, grenades are actually the best uh, sub weapon to feed to G mutants in order to pass around them. <laughs> like if there is enough, provided there is enough space between the G mutant and whatever walls are around the G mutant, it actually gives Leon a frame advantage that allows you to pass around it upon getting grabbed and using a defense item. Knives and flash grenades do not do that. It's only regular grenades, which is why I tend to use regular grenades for uh, those sections if I'm not going to use the magnum. I'll decapitate these three guys and uh, pull this lever. And while we're pulling the lever, we're going to run and grab the grenade over there. In this particular run, I use this grenade as my uh, sacrificial grenade for G mutants. Next up, we're going to take this uh, high-grade gunpowder and we're going to combine it with the large gunpowder from RPD-2. It'll give us uh, five shotgun shells. I had to do some fuckery to get around the G-Mutant down here, unfortunately. Take the Steel Boy rounds. Right there, so we have, should have like what eight shotgun shells or something. Decapitate this guy because he's going to get up as soon as we grab the rook plug. So we'll take that and be very, very careful not to round that corner if you left the zombie in the yellow vest alive. I'm just gonna angle ourselves, pay attention to the position of this guy, and he is right here. So, what I want him to do is I want him to submerge. If he does like a little wiggle and like he throws his head in the air, then that's your cue to drop down into the water and run. Uh, he cannot attack you when you're on a ledge. He can spit he can spit G embryos out, but they'll do nothing as long as you stay on the ledge. Um, the ideal is just that he is at the bottom of the ledge and you are at the top of the ledge. 
and you stay at a distance where he won't like swing and hit you because he actually will swing and hit you but otherwise he cannot damage you and if he's at a position where he can't damage you then you can just like pop a shot from the ledge and that'll generally uh that'll generally proc his submersion animation Next, we're going to climb up here. There's a zombie here to the left, so if you were thinking about using this dodge on the way out, don't. There's two zombies here this time. Just going to aim, slowly move up, and I wanted to uh, bait out that grab so I could run around him at the very end. And then I'm going to equip the uh, the grenade here. Unfortunately, my, uh, my initial shot, which sometimes if you shoot him in the neck, he'll just like dive into the water for some unknown reason. Sometimes that works, but if it doesn't work, then you have to use a grenade to get around them, unless you get really lucky. But I use, I typically use the grenade for that one. And then there's another G-Mutant behind me that just, like, slid out of the pipe. Gotta shoot the zombie that's in front of us, and we'll just ignore it. But, you know, I could hear, I could hear one of them spat out, like, G-Mutants, so gotta worry about those as well. There's two zombies that are active here as well, and you want to actually shoot both of them. But I forgot to shoot the one that was next to where I just put the queen plug. So we insert the queen plug, grab the king plug, drop down. That zombie wakes up when you drop down after you grab the king plug. And we're going to use the king plug to get the flamethrower. If you run out of inventory space, get rid of your knife. We got all three. Use the queen plug. Use the king plug. Take the queen plug again. Take the king plug again. Now we gotta check the position of the slidey boy that came out of the pipe. He's over there. Unfortunately, because we were too far away, he took this as a cue to spit out more G-Mutants. And at this point, I'm like, oh god, am I gonna have to reset the run now? But of course, you know, gotta do the next best thing that we can. So he submerged, and there is a, there is about a 50% chance that wherever a G-Mutant submerges, it will unsubmerge at that same location, but uh, otherwise it'll uh, probably just unsubmerge at like another spot. In which case, I got really lucky. I was just able to pass right through because the 50% roll was in my favor that time. So yeah, that was a really really close call. And we're gonna walk over here in order to trigger this guy doing a silly little football tackle. Whenever a G mutant submerges after its football tackle. It's not going to stun you if you try to run around it. That's the key, is just knowing when the G-Mutant is going to stun you if you try to maneuver around it. When I say things are unsafe around G-Mutants, I mean that it's going to stun you and it's going to grab you, or it's going to hit you. One of the three. Now we're going to put away the knife and the T-handle. Then we're going to take a flash grenade. One inventory slot free. Take the bishop. Then it goes queen. Bishop. King. Counterclockwise. And then Knight and Rook. Okay, almost there, Ada. Two, three, four.
muscle memory from the previous puzzle that time. And we're going to run around this hose and the claw will come out. And uh, when the claw plunges, we can actually use the flamethrower here. Just like in short bursts. Just try to make sure that all the flames hit. Because it actually does full damage to G2. Once, that, once that's done, we're going to stay on the corner over here. Don't try to flamethrower this guy. Otherwise, you're not going to make it through because your hitbox will be too big. And once we get through here, we're going to wait for him to do a little zip to the right. And once he does that, Still alive? after we've been flaming him a little bit, that basically guarantees that he's going to waste a slash. He's going to basically just waste an action, as you just heard. He just slashed the uh, pile of wood behind us. And when he slashes the pile of wood behind us, he's not going to reach us whenever we try to drop off that ledge there. So that's very, very important to note. I'll take the uh, the blue the blue grenade. <laughs> flash grenade. We'll throw a flash grenade. And then we're going to use the flamethrower. And then he's going to go down. And then we're just going to flame him down to uh, 100 fuel. At which point, we're just going to go over to this uh, pile of shrapnel over here, and we're going to wait for him to get up, and wait for him to turn completely towards us. We'll turn halfway towards us, because what by the time the grenade procs, he'll be turned completely towards us. And then use the rest of that 100 flame in order to stun him again, and that also puts him under 12,000 HP. So here's the deal. That crate does 7,000 damage every time it hits G2. In order for the fight to end, the crate must hit G2 when G2 is under 12,000 HP. G2 starts with 24,000 HP. And the flamethrower just does exactly enough to be able to finish him off that way. So as long as you stick to the script, G2 is a free fight. Cable Carl, take us down to Nest. There was fans I took it to ride. Nice. Where'd you get that? Borrowed it. Anyway, we're almost there. <sighs> yeah, by the way, in order for G2 to be guaranteed under 12,000 HP, you have to use all 400 flamethrower units. Maybe a one way ride, so be prepared. Then. This tram is bound for Nest. Do not exit until the final destination. Once we get into Nest, we are going to take a very specific line. We don't need to shoot any of the zombies in here. We're just going to run in here, and we're going to take this hand grenade, and all those zombies are going to be clustered in the center. We'll take these 200 fuel units and immediately reload the flamethrower. As long as we stay on the outside of the room and take this particular line, we do not have to worry about getting grabbed ever. Next, we'll take the fat gunpowder. Next, take the uh, knife there. For some reason, I keep forgetting to check right first. Because on Leon B, for some reason, he always tends to be on the right-hand side whenever that uh, automatic door opens. That zombie's a dick. All right, so we're going to combine the chip with the wristband and combine the regulator with the flamethrower and take the shotgun shells here. By the way, on the way out, avoid triggering this door because if you do, a zombie is going to be stacked up next to it and it's going to bite you. Dr. 
Dr. Lee, your okay. presence is urgently requested. We're going to put away the flamethrower and the grenade launcher because we don't need those for now. Grenade launcher. Frag grenade, excuse me. We'll hit this button and then we're going to go grab that signal modulator right there. First pass through the IV area, uh, just run right through while grabbing the shotgun shell, or sorry, the yellow gunpowder here. And the codes here are 2048 and 5831. I almost messed that up. We'll take that right there, the empty cartridge, and we're going to fill this cartridge by hitting blue, red, green, blue, red, green, blue, red, green, so just blue, red, and green three Manual times. Engage. Adjust amount of solution to match. Do not fumble the input. If you fumble the input, especially on green, it will fuck you over. And then it will take forever to solve the puzzle. There's a hand grenade here, and then we're going to combine these shotgun shells, but I actually made a boo-boo by putting this, uh, by putting this in the first slot, the large gunpowder here. For some reason, the, uh, IV zombie wasn't in the way. And of course, as you can see, I messed up and I combined the two large gunpowders and I was thinking, oh god, is this going to be it? And the answer is no. The answer is no, because there's two large gunpowders on the train, and that's pretty much the only reason why I need as much ammo as I picked up anyway. So we're safe. Some shotgun shells here as well, and in these scenarios you don't have to shoot these zombies, because we already have the signal modulator. And then we're going to set the signal modulator to Earth and adjust it accordingly. Turn on the power. These zombies will not wake up until you trigger the liquor further down the hallway. So what we're going to do is we're going to run into this area over here. We'll take the uh, take the yellow gunpowder, which we can no longer combine for the time being. We'll take the uh, fuel here. My recommendation if you get into such a predicament is just put away the yellow gunpowder. I got three knives now. Uh, we want knives here because knives are good for escaping in case we get grabbed by an IV because IVs only have one attack and that's an instant kill. Welcome back, Dr. Lee. You have You can run straight to this door and the liquor will completely miss you. Who left the freezer? Because it's that's its spawning in animation. Just like don't worry about it. Always from door to door, never left or right. Run through this door. 
and ignore the zombie that uh, pops up on the right. We're just going to go up these stairs. Be mindful of the zombie that is falling from the staircase at the top here. For some reason, the IV zombie just did a just did a sick little turn whenever I shot at him, so none of my pellets hit for some reason. I discarded this knife to pick up this other gunpowder here as needed. Then, we're going to run through here and shoot the ivy zombie to get through it as needed. I went this way specifically to get around the liquors in the basement and the zombies in the basement. It's just overall safer to go this way. I get more ammo too. Then we're going to go across here. Be mindful of any ivy zombies that are just like in the way here. Slash the bulbs on any ivy zombies that are between you and the chip and back. Because if you slash the bulbs, then they will not wake up like this. It's like they start to wake up in front of you, then you gotta deal with Mr. X. This is a pretty brutal section. It's like a trap. It's a straight up Dark Souls shit. Anyway, so we'll grab the uh, flash grenade here and give these guys a shell each, but of course, for some reason, the shell did not work. By the way, once you get out of a grab, especially if you use a defense item, you have a couple of seconds of grab immunity, so other enemies will not try to grab you. And if they do, they'll miss. I think it's mostly grab immunity, but... There's, there, there. I'm pretty sure there's like a couple of occasions where they can actually grab you, but there is, there is a, there is a very small window where if a zombie or similar tries to grab you, they just simply cannot. It gives the player enough time to like recover and like get to their senses after they've been grabbed and attacked. Game balancing. Anyway. Grenade on the floor here, and then we're going to switch the uh, switch the thing over to Amazon Web Services. I should have grabbed the. Uh, should have grabbed the flamethrower out of this box whenever I had the opportunity. Shotgun shells here. I did not have the flamethrower in my inventory. This was total pass Carsey moment, which I figured out very quickly as soon as I went to check my buttons and saw that I only had the shotgun. It's like, oh, I'm missing something. And then it's like, wait, there's a big old two slot space missing, and I only have one gun. What was that crucial gun that I needed to kill G3? Oh, right, the flamethrower. And we also needed the fuel. Kind of a close call in the G3 fight, but... Blam. Blam. Take out the leg eye, and then take out the back eye. It takes marginally more shells take out the eyes and then once we curve around here it's like uh two shotgun shells to take out the shoulder eye so for the first phase leg eye back eye shoulder eye and then once we get down to uh 150 fuel units is when we want to run this way and then take the 200 additional fuel 
And uh, so G3 cycles in between like two different phases. There's like there there's like a charge phase, and then there's a uh, there's like a one of two phase. The one of two phase is going to be either a jump or a four piece combo, and he just cycles in between these actions. But every so often, whenever he comes out of his one of two phase, he might actually try to grab a fuel canister off the wall. But because he did a jump, we were able to take out the left eye and the back eye. It's like the, the jump and the four piece combo make it very easy to hit the back eye. But like you have to know how to predict the jump. And if you run the wrong line around the jump, then you'll get damaged by like shockwave damage from when he lands. Otherwise you can just use a defense item to get out of it. But from this point on, during phase three, all we gotta do is just flamethrower him to death. But uh, I wasn't able to do it quick enough. So while he's grabbing the panel off the wall, at which point his kill trigger is completely switched off and we cannot kill him yet, we have to wait for him to complete that big long animation. We, I grabbed the, uh, the flash grenade that was next to the elevator. Then we're going to grab this uh, other flash grenade here on the far end of the room. Uh, once you resume after the fight, the camera is always in the same position. Leon is always in the same position. Camera is always in the same position. So wherever I'm going to pick up these items, you run the same line. You can safely do what I do here. And uh, once done... We have two more flashbangs, one more regular hand grenade, and our flamethrower is completely empty. We don't need the flamethrower anymore. down to six shells, but again, we'll have enough ammo to take out G5. Don't worry. Zombies getting up here, well, they're already up. For Leon, they're already up, so we gotta shoot them. The Ivy zombies, just shoot them to run by. Mr. X drops down, and we just do a uh, quick little uh, counterclockwise. Uh, is this a fucking joke? Put away the flamethrower, the knives, and hit tab, and then that'll line up all the grenades for us to just like pick up. Also, I want it the uh, high grade gunpowder. But my inventory is too full. Also, Make sure you unequip the shotgun here, because it'll make the grenades uh, quicker to throw, and that almost cost me this run. Go ahead and throw a grenade here. 
just try to make sure that it lands in front. But of course, they kept landing behind. Man, they keep landing behind and kept propelling him towards me. But after like uh, after about like six grenades, that's when he goes into like his uh, Air Jordan phase. That's when the two chunks of concrete down there drop. And then he's gonna recover, and then basically he'll do like a he'll do like a slam dunk. And when he does like a slam dunk, you delay throwing your grenade until after he does the slam dunk. And it's just a single throw. Throw, do throw, does a slam dunk. Doing it again. And I have six flash grenades, so maximum safety here. Flash grenades detonate faster, and also they just stop him in his tracks no matter the attack. So then there's uh oh, not good, and. Where did this thing come from? Throw one grenade. That's another reason to have the shotgun unequipped because having the shotgun equipped made it so that whenever I threw that last flash grenade to stun him, it took forever for me to throw that flash grenade, so I almost got caught. Lastly, we're going to use one of these two flash grenades to stun these zombies. We don't want to use the rocket here because we want to use the rocket for G4, G5, excuse me. Once that's done, we're going to grab that and take the... Uh, yeah, there it is. I'm just fixing up my fuck up, don't mind me. So, now we're going to wait. A problem with death? We're going to wait for the eye to open. Do not shoot. Because otherwise your bullets are going to do jack shit for damage. He's got just like, I don't know, 4 million HP. But as the fight goes on and on and on, he just takes like exponentially more damage. Christ! Once we see that, we'll just uh, fire off eight shotgun shells. Just go ahead and hold the button down. Don't worry about it. And that's our timing to fire off a rocket or two, and that's it. That's the advanced strats run. Sorry I skipped the ending. I skipped the ending a little too quick. But, uh, yeah. Hopefully this uh, helps out as, like, some alternative strats. If you still can't get an S plus rank. But uh, again, these strats are only doable on PC and Xbox Series X and PS5. Because those are the only uh, versions that allow you to do up to 120 FPS. Anyway, if you like this video, please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Also check out all of my other no damage runs. Got a lot of Resident Evil, but I also have a lot of survival horror, but also other games, other genres. So please be sure to check those out. I especially like RPGs, stealth action, action adventure type stuff aside from survival horror, so if any of that tickles your fancy, please be sure to check it out. Also follow me on Twitch at twitch.tv slash carcinogensda. Link is in the description below. That is where I record all of these runs live. Also the commentaries. And if you would wish to support my bad challenge run habit, you may do so on my Patreon at patreon.com slash carcinogensda. There I have some stretch goals, stretch incentives. I believe the current stretch incentive, let me uh, double check here, is 
Leon A in Resident Evil 2 Classic, it would be a kill all, no damage run. And uh, if the Patreon reaches $600, I will do that run, commentate it, get it on YouTube. But a huge thank you to all my patrons who I ran in the uh, in the uh, thank you reel at the start. I usually like to start with thanking my patrons, you know, in the event that they don't finish the video, they at least see their name, you know. So thank you. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. I will see you guys next video. Thank you all and have a good rest of your day. Or night. Whatever.
Total time, 105.21. Requirements for S rank for B scenario on hardcore, second scenario on hardcore, is to complete the game in under two hours with three or fewer saves. You can use as many first aid sprays as you like. Thank you for watching.